that's me, 19 and acting silly. When I was 19, I decided I was going to study abroad in New Zealand, one of the most beautiful countries on the planet. I decided this without thinking much about actually living in another country, that I'd be in a completely different country than my mom and dad, that I didn't know much about New Zealand beyond that they filmed Lord of the Rings there, or that keeping in touch with my friends and family would be incredibly difficult given the ridiculous time difference. No texts, no unplanned phone calls, no popping home for the weekend. We were back to emails or letters. You could say that I'm not much for planning ahead. After being there a month, the homesickness was almost kicking in. I couldn't call my mom every day like I could when I went to school in Des Moines, Iowa, and walking up and down Wellington's Hill to get to the grocery store was a pain. The Wi-Fi was complete shit, but that wasn't completely getting me down. Everyone has their good days and bad days, and so far, mine had been about a 60-40 split. A few months into my semester in New Zealand, the American friends I had made in my program, that's them, they're my friends Kayla and Kristen, though we went with some other people too, decided to hike the Tongariwa Alpine Crossing, one of the best day hikes in New Zealand. Now, I'm athletic, but hiking wasn't exactly in my wheelhouse. I told myself and anyone who would listen that I'd do the hike until I couldn't, and that they could just pick me up when they were done. What I didn't know about the Tongariro Alpine Crossing is that it's a one-way trek. You climb two mountains, pass an active volcano and a few sulfur lakes for a rough total of 12.1 miles, the very definition of an all-day hike. I guess that's what I get for not being a planner. I started off the trek doing great. There we are, starting the tr hike at who knows how early in the morning. My group had a wide variety of hikers, and so I wasn't the least experienced. I made it up through the first section just fine, but then we came to the section cleverly nicknamed the Devil Staircase, as it gets incredibly steep very quickly. I made it up most of the stairs just fine, but the final part of the Devil Staircase is climbing up to a cliff. There's a narrowish, le narrowish ledge, loose rock, and a strong, whipping wind. It was the wind that got me. The only handrail is a chain nailed into the rock. My poor friends, Kayla and Kristen, who had only seen normal, non-crying Ruth up until this point, were at a loss. I was crying hysterically and openly, refusing to climb to the top. Nothing Kayla could do or say would convince me to let go of the chain link handrail that had been fused with my fist. When all of a sudden, the strange woman took my hand and pulled me up the cliff. When we stopped halfway up so I could catch my breath, she told me that I looked like a strong girl and that I just had to keep going. When we got to the top, I thanked her and she returned to her group. As I stood there looking down at the sulfur lakes, this man with white hair and beard looked at me smiled, and said, Respect, with a thick German accent, so I almost didn't catch it. To climb down and keep following the path, you have to walk down on Scree, which essentially looks like the crumbly asphalt at the bottom of the pothole. I was scared, but two of my friends held my hands as we started down, where our feet promptly sunk about six inches into the Scree. And yes, the first time stepping down into the Scree, I was scared, but by the third step, I had fallen and was laughing hysterically, while my friends below snapped pictures of me square on my butt. Together, my group and I finished the hike just fine, and though the next day I was a little sore, I had found my love of hiking. I never got a copy of that picture of me, sitting there in the scree on my butt, but I don't think I need it. The memories are vivid enough without it. When the homesickness eventually arrived in full force, a few months into living in New Zealand, I tried to remember that I just had to keep going, up and over through the worst of it, through the aches in my chest that felt like the strong whipping wind, through to the next bit of the trek, to the next, until it was July and I was finally home. Now, whenever I need to convince myself that I can do something, I tell myself that I'm a strong girl 
who's climbed two mountains and passed an active volcano. That's that I just need to keep moving forward. It does the trick.